we begin our uh, critical introduction to the Pentateuch with a discussion of the documentary hypothesis. The documentary hypothesis is the dominant liberal theory as to the origin of the Pentateuch. This hypothesis is associated with Julius Wellhausen, who uh, wrote, a, uh, wrote in 1878, uh, defending this uh, view. He held that the Pentateuch was a composite work, that three narratives of Israel's history had developed, which he labeled J and E and P, which were contradictory at uh, many points. And these were woven together and combined with legal material from uh, a source called D to form the Pentateuch as we now have it. This hypothesis has been enormously influential in academic Bible scholarship. Indeed, by the mid-20th century, it was the predominant theory in the academy, having been widely accepted in Protestant, Jewish, and Catholic institutions. The scholar Griezmann, in fact, says anyone who does not accept the division of the text according to the sources and the results flowing therefrom has to discharge the onus if he wishes to be considered a collaborator in our scientific work approving that all research done until now was futile. According to this theory, the Pentateuch is a weaving together of four main sources, the Yahuwah source, labeled J, J, by the way, in German is pronounced Y, and it's related to Yahweh. Uh, Elohim is E. Uh, the Deuteronomist, uh, the Elohist source is E, the Deuteronomist source is B, and the priestly writings is P. Let's go briefly what these number labels stand for. J stands for Yahweh, uh, German J pronounced Y. The author is called the Yahuist or Yahuist, depending on how you want to spell Yahweh. But uh, the idea is that this author prefers the divine name Yahweh as his name for God. Wilhelsen dated the Yahweh source to between 850 and 950 BC, shortly after the start of the monarchy. He believed it was a Judean source, J is for Judah, and he thought, thinks that this source begins in Genesis 2 and verse 4 and was incorporated into various parts of Genesis through numbers. But then there's the J source. The character of the J source is that it tends to use very anthropomorphic language, referring to God in very human type terms. Uh, J shows little interest in sacrifice or ritual. And the motive of J was to arrange the chrono in chronological sequence, uh, the account of Israel's uh, history, and to give a theological interpretation to Israel's national traditions. The E source stands for Elohim, God. The author is called the Elohist, and is called this because this author prefers Elohim to Yahweh as his preferred designation for God. Wellhausen dated this source to 750 to 850 BC, a little later than J. And the locale would be Ephraim, which is another term for the Northern Kingdom. Uh, e is for Ephraim. And he dates this before the fall of the Northern Kingdom to the Assyrians in 722 BC. Well, then a redactor comes along, and a redactor is an editor, and he combines J and E into a single narrative JE. And this was done, according to Wilhelsen, to roughly around 650 BC. And the motive for the redaction 
Redactor J.E. sought to preserve the northern traditions preserved by E and incorporate them into the southern tradition preserved by J. Then comes the source D. D basically means Deuteronomy. Most of Deuteronomy is regarded as from the D source. The author is called the Deuteronomist. And he may have written also what is called the Deuteronomistic History, which is Joshua and Judges, Samuel and Kings. D is a legal source rather than a narrative source, unlike J and E, e and P. But uh, D knew of the traditions of J.E., but D was not immediately incorporated into J.E. The date of D is shortly before 621 B.C. According to Wilhausen, in 2 Samuel 22, when they discovered the Book of the Law in the Temple, what they really discovered was the Book of Deuteronomy. D emphasizes that uh, you're only to worship the Lord your God. It's the place that the Lord your God chooses, which is an allusion to Jerusalem. This Deuteronomy inspired Josiah's reform, which put down the worship in the high places and centralized worship in Jerusalem. But before that, uh, going all the way back to patriarchal times, uh, people could worship at various places. D is influential both on the language of the book of Jeremiah and in the historical books, the Deuteronomistic history. Well, then comes along Redactor D. And Redactor D will combine D with JE to produce a new document, JED. The motive for doing so was to combine the new outlook of Deuteronomy with the old and familiar traditions of JE. J.E. now was read in the light of Deuteronomy's theology. Then comes the source P, P meaning the priestly writings. P uh, uh, dates to uh, 550 B.C. to around 400 B.C., depending on which part of it you're looking at. The character of the P source was an interest in the cult, meaning Israel's organized worship. It reflects the interests of priests, sacrifices, building the temple, festivals, and various rituals. And there are two parts of P. Uh, narrative P, which is parallel with the story of J and E, that dates to the 400s BC. But then there was legal P, uh, that includes the Holiness Code, Leviticus uh, chapter 17 through 26, which is older than uh, the uh, narrative P, dating to around 550 BC. Other P laws are scattered throughout Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers. And uh, the argument of Wellhausen was that the laws of P are later than most of the prophets. And the text falsely attributes these laws to Moses, though in fact he had nothing to do with it. And then comes Redactor P. Redactor P combined P with J and E and D to form the familiar J-E-D-P around 400 B.C. His motive was to bring the traditional account of Israel's story in J and E and J-E-D in line with priestly theology emphasizing religion and temple more than politics. Now, who was the redactor that did that? Wilhausen speculated it might have been Ezra, who reinstituted uh, God's law according to Ezra chapter 7. And Nehemiah 8 uh, indicates that Ezra read the completed Pentateuch. Thus, by 400 B.C., the Pentateuch was completed and canonized. We will continue this uh, lecture on the next video.